On the next night, past midnight, as the clouds covered the moon and no eye could pierce the darkness, six vessels crept noiselessly within the Spanish line. A moment later, the sea was illumined, and six moving volcanoes bore down upon the terrified Indian. They were the dreaded fire ships, prepared and sent out by the English under cover of the night. Then the horrible panic seized the Spaniards, and spread from ship to ship like flames from sail to sail. Amid confusion and yells and unreasonable fear, every cable was cut and every vessel took to flight. When daylight dawned, the Spanish ships lay disabled and disordered off Gravelines. stir and bore down upon the enemy in hot pursuit. Before the day was far spent, a furious and general conflict had begun, which lasted for six hours. Riddled, shattered, disabled, their shot exhausted, the best Spanish ships gave up the fight and drifted with the current towards the coast of Holland. Wreck after wreck drifted on the waves, until a handful only of that vast and haughty host came wandering back to Spain. Few are those who are fortunate enough to pass from the scene in the hour of triumph and at the moment of their most brilliant renown before reverses or mistakes have come to dim the luster of their glory. He who had fought throughout his life for his country, for fame, revenge and power, for English supremacy at sea, was not granted the boon of dying in battle, and that battle which crushed the might of Spain and left England mistress of the waves. A league out to sea he was given a seaman's grave and the pirate admiral, who in life had been the mortal foe of Spain, lay alone in those Spanish waters, over which he had so often led his ships in triumph. Beautiful flower. 